The movie unfolds in the distant future, where humanity expands its reach into the cosmos. In this era, the Exor Corporation oversees colonization efforts from a sprawling skybound complex, surveying a desolate world housing a penal colony and Osiris, its capital city. Above this complex looms the flotilla, a crucial military outpost. Lieutenant Kane Somerville, a decorated war hero haunted by past mistakes, leads Exor's efforts in supporting new settlements. Estranged from his family after a tragic mission mishap, Kane struggles to connect with his 11-year-old daughter, Indy, amidst his duties aboard the flotilla. Their strained relationship comes to light during a desert excursion, where Indy expresses her mother's concerns about Kane's perceived escape. Determined to bond with his daughter, Kane shares his vision of humanity's future and imparts survival skills, including teaching Indy how to handle a weapon. Together, they inspect new bunkers, bridging the gap between them as they navigate the harsh landscape of their new world. As their time together concludes, Kane reluctantly sends Indy to Osiris City to stay with a nanny, as children are prohibited from residing in the flotilla. He reassures her of his return within a week and encourages her to reach out whenever needed. However, their parting is overshadowed by the unsettling presence of nocturnal monsters lurking in the wasteland. Back in the flotilla, Kane's routine begins anew. His AI companion, Travis, rouses him from sleep and attends to his breakfast while sorting through messages. Kane prioritizes Indy's message amidst a sea of ignored calls, only to find it abruptly cut short. Concerned, he requests Travis to restore it but learns that surface communications have been disrupted due to disturbances in the nearby prison. Commanding the Exor complex is General Lennox, whose self-serving nature places her interests above those of the colony's inhabitants. Amidst the chaos following the breach of the prison, the colony's leaders, including Colonel and Linux, grapple with the dire situation. Creatures engineered by Exor have infiltrated, resulting in casualties among prisoners and citizens alike. With the threat of annihilation looming, the Colonel prioritizes saving lives, but Linux's concerns lie elsewhere. Fearing damage to the company's reputation, Linux devises a deceitful plan, manipulating the truth to suit her agenda. She fabricates a narrative of a prisoner-led uprising, falsely attributing it to the release of a deadly virus previously experimented on by Exor. This misinformation aims to justify drastic measures and safeguard Exor's interests. In a tense moment, Exor threatens to release a dangerous pathogen in the capital if any rescue attempts are made. Linux swiftly activates Protocol 84, which mandates the destruction of the entire colony to prevent the spread of the threat. Aware of the potential fallout, Linux sets a tight deadline of 23 hours to execute the protocol, assuring everyone's safety, including those in the capital and her employees' families. To ensure compliance, Linux orders monitoring of all attendees for the next 23 hours, with any suspicious activity to be dealt with promptly. Meanwhile, Kane, desperate for information, seeks answers from colleagues but is met with secrecy and classified reports. As events unfold, the truth is revealed, there is no virus threat, but instead, Exor has been secretly experimenting with creatures known as, Ragged, for years. These monsters are now on the loose, heading towards the main city. With a looming disaster, tempers flare as Kane confronts the Colonel for withholding vital information, but time is running out to prevent catastrophe. With just 20 minutes until the hangar bay is sealed off, Kane makes a swift decision, he'll rely on his piloting skills. Taking a ship without permission, he maneuvers expertly, evading pursuing officers. However, his daring move to eliminate the last Exor guard pushes him to the brink of unconsciousness due to extreme G-forces. Just in time, the emergency system activates, ejecting him from his seat. Regaining consciousness, Kane deploys his parachute and lands safely in the water, only to be swiftly knocked out by a mysterious assailant. Awakening on the ground, he discovers Cy Lombrock, holding him at gunpoint. Despite Kane's attempt to deceive him with a fabricated story, Cy, having been a nurse at the prison, sees through the lie. Caught in a precarious situation, Kane faces the reality of his failed escape attempt. In a desperate bid to enlist Cy's help, Kane spins a tale of impending doom, claiming that the planet is on the brink of destruction. He plays his trump card, mentioning his desire to rescue his daughter from the capital and offering Sai access to a safety bunker in exchange for assistance. Sai, swayed by the promise of safety for his loved ones, agrees to aid Kane in his mission. A flashback transports us to Sai's time as a prisoner on the planet, sharing a meal with fellow inmates Vim and Crete. Amidst their conversation, we learn of Sai's plans for escape, fueled by information provided by another inmate named Carmel. 
As tensions rise among the group, Crete expresses doubts about the risky mission, fearing it's a suicide mission. However, Sai, driven by a sense of urgency, convinces Crete and Vim that the time for action is now or never. With confirmation that Bostock and his group are also on board, the plan gains momentum. The next phase requires all of them to be placed in solitary confinement to identify the correct exit. However, Carmel's attempt to secure solitary confinement backfires, leading to a brutal confrontation with Warden Mordain. Meanwhile, Sai sparks a calculated brawl in the mess hall, drawing the attention of Mordain and the guards. Surprisingly, they allow the fight to escalate, leading to chaos and ultimately landing the prisoners in solitary. Trapped in rotating cells with disorienting lights, Sai and Vim are eventually summoned by Mordain for a mysterious purpose. In the present, Sai grimly acknowledges to Kane that reaching the capital in time seems improbable. However, Kane proposes an alternative route through a contraband outpost beyond the mountains. Their conversation is interrupted by the sound of passing ships, signaling Exor's pursuit. Seeking refuge, they make their way to a nearby bar where they encounter Jip and Bill engaging in a dangerous game of knife throwing. Inside the bar, tensions escalate when Kane approaches a couple who own the bus parked outside. Their game is interrupted, and they react angrily, with Jip brandishing a knife and Bill confronting Kane. Sai steps in, vouching for Kane as an Exor defector desperate to reunite with his family. Offering a hefty sum of 20 grand, Kane persuades them to agree to the trip, albeit with a condition, passing Jip's test of getting high and hitting a target with a knife. Kane's success secures their agreement, and they set off, planning to make a detour for weapons. In a flashback, Vim wakes to find himself trapped in a cage, facing a monstrous creature that injects him with a dangerous substance. Meanwhile, Sai, also imprisoned, learns from Mordain about Exor's terrifying terraforming project, which involves mutating prisoners into adaptable creatures capable of surviving in any environment. As Sai is unexpectedly transported to another room, he reunites with Bostock, who has orchestrated their escape. Their preparations are cut short by Crete's warning of impending danger. Chaos ensues as the mutated prisoners wreak havoc, including Vim-turned-monster-killing Mordain, 54-42. The prisoners flee for their lives, realizing the true horrors of Exor's experiments unleashed upon them. Bostock and Crete express their desire to head for the capital, but Sai, driven by a different motive, decides to part ways, citing his intention to attend the opera. They go their separate paths. In a flashback to Earth two years prior, Sai faces the grim reality of a lengthy prison sentence, marked as a societal outcast for his alleged betrayal. He resigns to the seeming insignificance of his actions. Back in the present, Kane and Sai await the delivery of their ordered weapons. Mandel and Joe arrive, demanding 30 grand for their services. Kane complies with their demand, and the group departs, leaving the two men jubilant over their newfound wealth. However, their revelry is short-lived as they notice a disturbing sight on the horizon the approaching monsters, ready to launch their attack. As the monsters close in, Joe and Mandel attempt to defend themselves by firing through the windows. Though they manage to eliminate a few, the relentless onslaught forces them to confront the grim reality. With no other recourse, Joe resorts to detonating a grenade, sacrificing themselves to stave off the approaching horde. Later that evening, Kane recounts the harrowing encounter to the others on the bus, discussing the impending bomb threat set to detonate in four hours. Amidst the chaos, they engage in a philosophical discourse, pondering the twists of fate and the ethical implications of using prisoners for labor. Upon arrival in Osiris a couple of hours later, they are met with a city plunged into turmoil. The monsters run rampant, spreading chaos and infection, plunging the once bustling streets into a scene of utter devastation. Armed and determined, the group devises a plan. Kane and Sai will venture out to find Kane's daughter, while Jip and Bill remain behind to provide cover and safeguard the bus. As the monsters close in, the couple bravely defends their position, eliminating any threats that draw near. Meanwhile, Kane and Sai make their way into the building where Indy resides. A helpful neighbor grants them access to the upper floors, where they discover Indy safe but her nanny tragically deceased. After comforting Indy with a gentle lie about her nanny's departure, they attempt to descend the stairs, only to encounter a formidable obstacle in the form of a monstrous creature. As chaos reigns inside the bus, Jip struggles to save Bill, who's gravely injured from a creature's attack. Despite her efforts to locate a first aid kit, Bill succumbs to his wounds, leaving Jip to mourn his passing in her arms. 
Meanwhile, Kane, Sai, and Indy reach the rooftop of the building, sealing the door behind them. With no other escape route, Sai makes a daring leap with Indy, landing safely atop the bus. Kane follows suit, narrowly avoiding a perilous fall thanks to Sai's timely assistance. Desperate to rejoin their companions, Kane and Sai pound on the hatch, urging Jip to open it. Torn by grief over Bill's demise, Jip hesitates but ultimately relents, allowing them entry. As Sai tenderly covers Jip's body with a blanket, she starts the bus, whisking them away to safety amidst the backdrop of tragedy and sacrifice. In a poignant moment, Kane opens up to his daughter, explaining the dire situation and expressing remorse for his absence in her life. Indy, understanding and forgiving, accepts his apology. Kane also ensures the group is prepared, providing Jip with directions to the bunker and ensuring everyone knows the access code. Meanwhile, within the Exor complex, Linux initiates Protocol 84 upon learning of the approaching bus. Spotting an incoming ship, Indy alerts Kane, prompting him to instruct Jip to change course to avoid detection. After a tense pursuit, the ship eventually withdraws, allowing the group to redirect towards the bunker. Their journey to safety is abruptly interrupted when the ship returns, opening fire and claiming the lives of Jip and Kane. Despite the tragedy, Sai and Indy press on, determined to reach the bunker. Along the way, they encounter a relentless monster, forcing them to flee through treacherous caves. In a desperate struggle, Sai is infected but manages to dispatch the creature. Arriving at the bunker's entrance, Indy successfully inputs the code, securing their entry moments before the planet is bombarded. However, Sai begins to undergo a terrifying transformation. Faced with an impossible decision, Indy refuses Sai's request to end his suffering alone, opting to stay by his side as his transformation unfolds. In a poignant flashback, Sai's past as a nurse on Earth unfolds. His world shatters when his wife and daughter are brought into the hospital as patients, victims of a tragic accident. Consumed by grief and rage, Sai lashes out at the man responsible before being restrained by security. Returning to the present, days have passed since the cataclysmic explosion. In a desolate landscape, two explorers stumble upon the bunker, spotting Indy in the distance clad in a spacesuit. Their discovery triggers a violent encounter as Sai, now transformed into a monstrous figure, attacks them. However, thanks to Indy's influence, Sai retains a semblance of rationality. After dispatching one explorer, Sai and Indy seize the opportunity to interrogate the other desperate for information about the world beyond their shelter. As the tense exchange continues, the explorer reveals a shocking truth. Flotilla, the space station, is headed back to Earth following the disaster. The official narrative attributes the catastrophe to a prisoner uprising, masking the true extent of the tragedy. Indy seizes the opportunity to secure their escape, offering the explorer a chance at survival if she helps them reach Flotilla undetected. Faced with no other options, the woman reluctantly agrees. Boarding the explorer's ship, the woman observes as Indy and Sai communicate through sign language, witnessing a tender moment between them. With a mixture of determination and sorrow, Indy reaches out to comfort Sai, assuring him they're on their way home and bidding a heartfelt farewell to her father. Amidst the uncertainty of their future, a glimmer of hope emerges as they embark on a journey towards redemption and a new beginning.